In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. A reading from the first book of Kings. After the death of Naboth, the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Start down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He will be in the vineyard of Naboth, of which he has taken possession. This is what you shall tell him. The Lord says, After murdering, do you also take possession? For this the Lord says, in the place where the dogs licked up the blood of Namath, the dogs shall lick up your blood too. Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me out, my enemy? Yes, he answered, because you have given yourself up to doing evil in the Lord's sight, I am bringing evil upon you. I will destroy you and will cut off every male in Ahab's line, whether slave or freeman in Israel. I will make your house like that of Jeroboam, son of Nabat, and like that of Baasha, son of Ahijah, because of how you have provoked me in leading Israel into sin. Against Jezebel, too, the Lord declared. The dog shall devour Jezebel in the district of Zizreel. When one of Ahab's line dies in the city, dogs will devour him. When one of them dies in the field, the birds of the sky will devour him. Indeed, no one gave himself up to the doing of evil in the sight of the Lord as did Ahab, urged on by his wife Jezebel. He became completely abominable by following idols, just as the Amorites had done, whom the Lord drove out before the children of Israel. When Ahab heard these words, 
He tore his garments and put on sackcloth over his bare flesh. He fasted, slept in the sackcloth, and went about subdued. Then the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Have you seen that Ahab has humbled himself before me? Since he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the evil in, his, in this time. I will bring the evil upon his house during the reign of his son. The word of the Lord. said to his disciples, you have heard what it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly father, for he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brother only, what is unusual about that? 
Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Continuing on from the theme of yesterday's gospel, Jesus continues to challenge us. He spoke to us yesterday about not resisting those who do evil against us to turn the other cheek when we are struck. And uh, if we think he's going to let up on us today, he just kind of keeps driving the point home, doesn't he? He tells us that we are to love our enemies and to pray for those who persecute you. But he also attaches a phrase to that command to us. He says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your Heavenly Father. And I think what Jesus is teaching us here very clearly is that the way in which we show that we are children of our Heavenly Father is in the love that we show not just for those that love us or from whom we might expect a return of love and affection, but to even love those who would consider themselves our enemies, who would harm us. That is the true witness that we are sons and daughters of God. We are made sons and daughters of the living God in the grace of our baptism. We are adopted. We are filled with God's life. But we cannot just claim to be children of God by virtue of our baptism. We have to bear witness to that. And this is what the world needs today, are signs of love that go beyond any kind of superficial understanding of what love is about or how uh, some in the world today might define love. I mean, love could be defined in so many different ways. But the kind of love to which Jesus calls us is a very, very particular kind of love. Elsewhere in the Gospel, what does he say? Love one another, period? No. Love one another as I love you. And he showed us the supreme act of love when he laid down his life for us. And God is not calling us to anything that he has not been willing to give us the supreme example of in his son Jesus. When you think about it, Jesus is the eternal Son of God. Jesus is God. God hangs on the cross. And he looks at those who put him there. Those who are responsible for his betrayal, his condemnation, his sentencing, his passion. And now he hangs on the cross and they are there. And they're not beating their breasts, begging him for forgiveness. They continue to mock him, jeer at him, hurl insults at him. And from the cross, in the midst of his great agony and suffering, he looks upon them 
And he asks his father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They do not know that they are crucifying the Son of God. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. It is that supreme love, that laying down of his life for us that we now celebrate in the Eucharist. We renew the sacrifice of the altar. And as we approach this altar for the Eucharistic mystery, we once again stand at the foot of the cross as we renew his sacrifice on the altar of the cross in this Eucharist. And Jesus continues to look at us. And from that depth of his love and mercy, he pours out his love on us. Let us, with hearts and minds lifted in prayer to our Father in heaven, present him our needs. We pray for the whole church throughout the world, that as we prepare for the year of faith and to put out into the deep in the work of the new evangelization, we will be filled with the Holy Spirit and given every grace and strength that we need. We pray to the Lord. For those we have elected to public office, that their hearts will be turned especially to the most vulnerable among us, the unborn, the poor, the aged, the handicapped, the sick. We pray to the Lord. For a profound and lasting renewal in the sacred liturgy of the church, that our divine worship may truly give glory to God and bring us his grace and sanctification. We pray to the Lord. For all those who exercise ministry in the church as musicians, as cantors, as organists and other instrumentalists, and as members of scholas and choirs, that they will realize that at the sacred liturgy they join their voices to those in heaven to give praise to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all those suffering this day, in body and mind or in spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord For a generous response to the Lord's call to serve him in the priesthood and consecrated life, especially here in the Diocese of Marquette, and for the perseverance of our seminarians in formation, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all of our beloved dead, those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, that they will be quickly brought into the kingdom to see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all the prayers we hold in our hearts this day, for those we have promised to pray for and who have asked for our prayers, for those who are praying for us and for those who have no one to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, hear these prayers we make through the intercession of St. Ramuel. We ask you to answer them according to your will and for our good and salvation. All of this we ask in the name of Jesus the Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the most holy church. Grant those who approach your altar, O Lord, that spirit of devotion with which the blessed abbot Romwald was on fire, so that, pure of heart and fervent in charity, we may offer you a worthy sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. And you make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter, St. Amal, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Benedict, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are, who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Peace I live you, 
my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. each other the sign of Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am unworthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. By the power of this sacrament which we have received, renew our hearts, O Lord, so that by the example of the abbot, blessed Romwald, being wise in the things above and not in the things of earth here below, we may merit to appear in glory with Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.